You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. To think some more about this issue of Jesus' fulfillment of Scripture, let's look at the issue of slavery. The Old Testament laws are quite clear. You can enslave people, just not fellow Israelites. Oh, and by the way, you should treat them relatively kindly. Don't beat them up so badly that they die, for example. Look at the beginning of Exodus 21 for the bit about uh, not having Hebrew slaves and the bit about treating them kindly. And then look at verse 20 and following for the bit about not beating them so badly that they die. And then there's Paul. Paul, too, accepts that slavery exists as an institution in the ancient world and doesn't criticize it. Colossians 4.1 Slave owners, be fair and honest with your slaves. Don't forget that you have a master in heaven. Except that he points out that as Christians we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And in Christ there is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female. Colossians 3.11 and Galatians 3.28 Though Paul doesn't actually draw any consequences from these stirring statements about practical living of life. So then we look at Jesus. Jesus' whole life was dedicated to setting people free. Free from Satan. Free from illness. Free from fear. Free from... How would Jesus have reacted to slavery? What would Jesus do? Or take an issue that's a hot topic in New Zealand at the moment, spanking children. It's quite clear in Proverbs. We're instructed, spare the rod, spoil the child. Proverbs 13.24 Or 22.15 23.13 Yes, beating kids with rods was really popular advice among the wise in ancient Israel. And there's no way you can read rod as anything more gentle than a big stick. But, can you imagine Jesus? Suffer the little children to come unto me so that I can whop them with a big stick. It just doesn't work. I can't imagine it, and I'm sure you can't either. You see, when you fulfill that spare the rod, spoil the child advice in Jesus, I think it becomes something like, children need discipline. Make sure you discipline them well. And then in Paul you get the advice, looking back from after Jesus came, parents don't provoke your children. Colossians 3.21 and the same idea in Ephesians 6.4 That's how it works. It's not a simple find a verse and quote it and that's what the Bible says about this or that or the other topic. It's a question of looking at the Bible as a whole. Looking at the Bible as a story. Comparing what was said before Jesus came in the sinful world that we live in and what was said after Jesus came still in the sinful world we live in but in the light of Jesus and above all thinking about the story of Jesus and how it fits with what we are perceiving as the Bible's teaching we read the Bible in the light of Jesus and we criticize our conclusions about the Bible in the light of Jesus so what does the Bible teach about disciplining children Despite Proverbs 23, 13 and 14, don't withhold correction from the child, for if you beat him with a rod, he won't die. You should beat him with a rod. That way you'll deliver his soul from Sheol. Despite that, I don't think the Bible does teach us that we should beat our children with rods. I think the Bible, taken as a whole and read in the light of Jesus, teaches us that children need discipline, careful, good, loving discipline, and does not teach us that they need beating with rods. We read the Bible in the light of Jesus, because Jesus is the fulfillment of all Scripture. He fills it out, completes it, and makes it whole and perfect.